O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News. Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. Stand up for your country. You know, few Americans are happy with what's going on here in the USA. All the polls show that. I guess there's 20, 25 percent who are delirious and think things are going great. I don't really. Maybe that's the Taylor Swift contingent. I don't know. But the regular folks, uh, and I talked to plenty of them, are all disenchanted. And uh, it's a, the reason is politics. It, it just comes right down to that. So we have a very weak president. And if you want to think Joe Biden is not weak, you're perfectly entitled to think that. But the facts belie that this man has screwed it up so badly that another four years, uh, it'd be cast- catastrophic for, for the country. So that you start there. All right, his policies of open border, of uh, putting regulations on the economy that drive inflation up. Oh, no, inflation's coming down. Eh, it's not. Go to the grocery store, okay? Um, you're paying um, $20,000, I believe, the average family, uh, more a year than you paid under Trump for essentials. I mean, look at your insurance bill. And then on the Republican side, it's just chaos after chaos after chaos after chaos in that party. And I'm not even talking about Donald Trump, who I've told you many times, not even a Republican, he's a populist. But the Republican Party, there's no cohesiveness to it, all right? The messaging is all over the place. And that's why Biden gets away with a lot of stuff, um, because the Republicans don't have a problem-solving agenda outside of Donald Trump who's a generalist, and the media just hammers him every single day, so it's hard to even get his message out. So let's take an honest look at where we stand now vis-a-vis the presidential election of November of this year. That's the Talking Points memo. Now, this is an honest assessment, so turn off the TV or the radio right now if you do not want an honest (laughs) assessment, because a lot of our countrymen don't country men and women. They don't want it. But here it is. So Donald Trump is leading Biden in the national polls by about a point. A new poll today from the Wall Street Journal has Trump up by three. All right. That's in the margin of error. So it is very tight. Trump should be up by 20 if you are just gauging his performance in four years to Biden's in three and a half years. Trump should be up 20 points. Wall Street Journal poll out today in the swing states, and this is a fair poll, it's evenly divided uh, among Republicans, Democrats, and uh, others. Um, It has Trump up by three general, as I said. In Arizona, Trump is up by five, 47-42. I believe Trump will win Arizona. Georgia, the Wall Street Journal poll has Trump up by one. I do not believe that result. I don't believe it. Okay, I think uh, Trump will win Georgia easily because of the Lake and Riley case. Michigan, uh, the poll has Trump up by three. That's a dicey three right there. North Carolina, I believe Trump will win it. Polls have him up by six. Nevada, Trump is up by four. I think Trump will win Nevada because of the economy. Pennsylvania, uh, Wall Street Journal has Trump up by three. I do not believe that. I believe Pennsylvania will vote for Biden because the Philadelphia voting situation has not been fixed. And that is the overwhelming population center in Pennsylvania. It is dubious to say the least. And finally, Wisconsin is a tie. Um, Wisconsin, go. you don't know what's going to happen. You just can't. Can't tell. All right. So now um, Trump gets into a situation that will hurt him at least temporarily, and that is the Stormy Daniels trial. Uh, We talked about it yesterday. I hope you saw the No Spin News yesterday. Um, We had very in-depth coverage of what Trump is facing in New York City, criminal charges that he manipulated his books to pay off Stormy Daniels. If you didn't see it and you are a premium member of BillOReilly.com, you get a transcript of it anytime you want. We have segments Post it as well. So just go to the website. 
All right, April 15th, Trump trundles into New York City. He's got to sit there for as long as that criminal trial goes, four days a week. I can't see it going more than two weeks myself. Some people say four, six weeks. I can't see it. All right. The key witness is a woman named Hope Hicks, who uh, was an advisor and a friend to Donald Trump. She's testifying for the prosecution, but God knows what she's going to say. It can't be hearsay in a criminal trial. I mean, just can't. So I don't know what Hicks knows. I don't know what she's going to say. But anyway, uh, it's going to be nasty, and the media every single day will slam Trump guilty, 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 because the media has already convicted Trump of everything. They don't care whether he's guilty or innocent. They don't care that Ms. Daniels, um, some say, practiced extortion to even get this thing uh, where it is. The media's never going to report that. So every day that Trump is in that courtroom, it's going to be slam, 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 slam. And that will affect some independent women. Most people, they know this is bogus, all right? And they don't even care what Trump did with Stormy Daniels or didn't do, all right? They don't care. But it'll have a little effect on that niche vote of independent women. Now, Trump's lucky because this is going to get out of the way before May. And by uh, November, people don't even remember it. Okay, so that's where we are. Now, the money is rolling in to Joe Biden from the progressives, Hollywood, all these people. It's got about 190 million. All right. And he needs it because Biden will not be able to campaign much. All right. He's going to have to stay in the White House. He can't go out and be confronted by local reporters or any reporters. Can't it's incapable of that. So it's going to be TV ad, TV ad, TV ad, TV ad. And he's got to raise an enormous amount of money to buy the television ads, which have already started. Um, The Republicans will raise money, too. So it's not going to be that big a deficit. Uh, Abortion will be Biden's main theme. Not the economy, not the border, not Israel, not Ukraine. Abortion. Okay, that's what it's going to be. And on the other side, Republicans better start supporting military aid to Ukraine. And just for this one reason, I'm going on News Nation tonight. Uh, I've got to wise up Cuomo at eight o'clock. Look, if Trump wins the election, it's going to be a lot easier for him to make a deal with Putin if Putin is still getting hammered. If Putin's winning, it's going to be much more difficult for Trump to stop that. If Putin's in pain, Trump will probably be able to come to some kind of a stoppage of this. So the Republicans have got to get that military aid over there for their own self-interest and the interest, of course, of the country. But a lot of Republicans can't figure that out. All right. They're not the brightest bulbs, some of these people. I think I have to I hate to say this, but I think the Democrats, by and large, are smarter than the Republicans at this point in history. Okay, so that's where we are, seven months out to the vote. Um, Both Biden and Trump are selling the same thing. Doom will take. Because if we don't win on November 5th, I think our country is going to cease to exist. It could be the last election we ever have. I actually mean that. We don't win. I think this could be the last election we ever have. That's where our country's going. America, as we begin this election year, we must be clear. Democracy is on the ballot. Your freedom is on the ballot. (laughs) Yes, we'll be voting on many issues. On the freedom to vote. And have your vote counted. Well, it'll be counted in Philadelphia, all right, maybe six, seven times. Sorry to be cynical, but I know what's going on there. Okay, so both candidates are selling doom. Vote for me, the country goes down a drain. There you go. Something will happen. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is, but something's going to happen to clarify this election. In our whole history, whenever we're at this cross point, something happens. That's the memo. 
All right, Biden's scheduled today. He gives uh, a little bit of speech about lowering health care costs. OK, he didn't write the speech. He delivered it. Uh, that's all he did all day. Uh, RFK Jr. He'll be 12 percent of the vote in November. That's my prediction. And he gets 12 percent. It's not going to be on all the ballots. Um, it's hard. But anyway, Tulsi Gabbard, the former uh, Hawaii congresswoman, says that she was offered the VP slot by RFK and turned it down. Why did she turn it down? Because she wants to be VP under Trump. And that's why. And she got a shot. The problem with Ms. Gabbard is she's an isolationist. And for reasons I just told you, that's tough. Trump's not an isolationist. All right. Trump thinks he can make deals abroad that help America, and he made some good ones. Gabbard doesn't want anything to do with any foreign conflicts. But, you know, these politicians, they change fairly quickly. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation supports America's greatest heroes, U.S. service members, and first responders who gave their lives, those catastrophically injured in the line of duty and homeless vets. The Foundation's gold star fallen first responder and homeless vet programs honor the sacrifices made by men who fought and died for us and women who risked their lives for our country as well. The Foundation's Never Forget program engages people in 9-11 remembrances across America with more than 80 runs, walks, and dozens of golf outings every year. The Tunnel of Towers 9-11 Institute educates kids from kindergarten through 12th grade about America's darkest day while helping our nation keep its vow to never forget. So please support Tunnel to Towers. Donate $11 a month. Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. That's T, the number two, another T, dot org. Okay, so the final thought, uh, no, the mail. Here it is. I got it. I got it out of <laughs> out of order. Come on, O'Reilly, get it together here. I do everything here. So you better... All right, here is the mail. Peter McKay, Perkinston, Mississippi. Bill, I'm glad you were in attendance at the funeral for the murdered NYPD detective. I believe thousands of your listeners and viewers would have been there possible. I feel you represent us all and your presence at this most somber occasion. And I wanted you to thank you for that. I believe that everybody watching me, and I was on Hannity radio program talking about the collapse of the criminal justice system in America today. And he said, all of my listeners agree that this is totally out of control. I think the same way. I don't get any dissent on this. I get dissent on most other things, you know, in the mail, but not this. Dayton Robinson, Pueblo, Colorado. Democrats like the COVID pandemic because it provides a feeling of power and control. Not control, but power, you hit it. So the progressive left, the far left, not regular moderate Democrats, they want Washington to control everything. And a pandemic, the government orders you to do stuff. We all know that. So Democrats like that. That's what they want, an imposition of lifestyle from the federal government. That's what progressivism is all about. John Wittry, Waynesboro, Virginia. Hey, Bill, I may have missed it, but could you give us some O'Reilly insights on the chaos in Haiti? I feel bad for the good people there, but it's been going on a long time. I haven't covered the Haitian thing because I have dealt with Haiti before, and it has not changed, got worse. When you have a nation that has no leadership and no law enforcement, interestingly enough, no law enforcement, when it is corrupt from top to bottom, this is what you're going to have. Drug gangs now run Haiti. The government doesn't run it. Army doesn't run it. Police don't run it. The drug gangs run it. So that's it. That's my analysis. Now, this has been, Haiti's been chaos for what, 50 years, 100 years? The only people who ran the country so that it didn't completely fall into the ocean 
was the uh, Pantan Makut people, you know, the brutal fascists that killed all dissenters. Duvalier, Papa Doc, and Baby Doc. But otherwise, gone. And you can't, you just can't. We can't do anything in Haiti. You could send UN troops in. It was supposed to do that six months ago. They still haven't gotten there yet. Thanks, UN. Georgina Marty, Ocala, Florida. Uh, Bill, thank you for giving us the update on Holly. So glad she's coming around. Uh, the fact that she follows you all over the place is an act showing how grateful she is. I don't, I don't know if dogs and cats and goldfish can be grateful, but I, I don't know. You know, it's very interesting psychology to watch the pets. She knows something bad happened to her. She knows that she's safe now. That's what she knows as a dog. So I, she's following me around, which is fine with me. Janet. I regret not having pet insurance when my cat Monty was diagnosed with diabetes and pancreatitis. All right, so we gave you the uh, uh, pet insurance information yesterday. Again, go to BillOReilly.com. It's where everything is. Frank, thank you for highlighting the Cleveland Plain Dealer editorial. While many of their stories are behind a paywall, there are numerous examples of bias reporting, especially when injecting Trump into the story. Paper hates Donald Trump. Cleveland Plain Dealer. And I want to do it take the editor uh, to task, because that man showed a lot of ignorance, not about Donald Trump, but about history, comparing Nazi Germany to America. That's insane. If you read Killing the SS, and I hope you all have, I mean, that'll tell you what Germany was. It's not, as bad as things are here, we're light years away from that. Uh, Sharon, concierge member, I appreciated um, what you had to say um, for years, I followed you, and you always tell the truth. That's our mandate, Sharon. You know, it sounds trite. It sounds trite. Oh, Riley always tells the truth. We are dedicated not to making any mistakes or spinning anything. I mean, we are. And if you follow us, you know that. Um, okay, so I got uh, that done, and now I got Final Thought, which is pretty amusing. Is a picture of me in college you might want to see. We'll be right back with that. Everything is expensive these days, you know that. The government is printing trillions of dollars in consumer prices higher than ever. If the government continues its printing and spending, the dollar could continue its free fall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But there are a few things you can do right now. American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your money, your retirement, your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. Start with a short phone call, and they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your 401k or IRA. So please call or text them right now. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. Call 877-444-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Again, that's 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. It is not too late to make the right choice. If you're distancing yourself from companies supporting the radical left, please choose AMAX Medicare Advisory Service. Whether it's prescription drug coverage, plan changes, exploring Medicare options, AMAC provides top-notch guidance from their experienced staff. Upholding pro-America values, AMAC has been helping people navigate Medicare for years. Their services are not only free of charge, but also free from any leftist agenda or corporate influence. AMAC stands as the conservative alternative to the AARP, earning its position as the number one group for freedom-loving individuals. So make the right choice for your health and values with AMAC. Choices do matter, and the choice is yours. Choose Medicare the right way with AMAX Medicare Advisory Service. You can call them at 888-355-5605 during normal business hours, 888-355-5605,
or online at amac.us forward slash trust. That's amac.us forward slash T-R-U-S-T. amac.us forward slash trust. All right, here's the final thought of the day. I'm doing spring cleaning. This is true. Now, I will admit I have a housekeeper. I've had her for many years, and she does a great job. But I got to go through my own stuff. I've got T-shirts that are 30 years old. <laughs> you know, because I remember buying them in Singapore or wherever I was, you know. And I don't want to throw them away. They're kind of keepsakes, right? You know, but I, 30-year-old T-shirts and stuff. I do get rid of my sneakers. Um, but I'm going through all of my old, and I have a voluminous amount. You can imagine, I've been to 86 countries, I've covered every story, uh, you know, and I've got all these mementos in there. But I also have pictures, and I'm finding pictures that I didn't even know existed. So I play college football, some of you know that. Uh, I was a quarterback, a place kicker, and punter for Marist College up in Poughkeepsie, New York. And I found this picture, um, and uh, look at that form, huh? Look at that form. There it is. Now, my senior year, I won the uh, punting championship in my league. Uh, I was a better punter than place kicker, but I was an okay place kicker. Uh, but there is a picture I found. <laughs> it was, look at the stand. It was packed. We used to get thousands of people at the games back then. Anyway, I, got, I found a lot of other really good pictures that I'll share with you, uh, you know, in the upcoming weeks. Some really interesting parts of my life and where I've been and what I've done, things like that. And it's important. So my uh, final thought is this. If you have a lot of clutter in your house, and I don't. I mean, my stuff is all segmented all over the place. I don't go in the basement. My, <laughs> I'm afraid to get down in the basement. Um, but if you have a lot of clutter, go through it because it's fun. And you'll find little treasures. You'll find stuff um, that you, never, you forgot about. You don't even know exists. And I learn from it, too. Um, so I go back and I see you know, what I did on a certain story, uh, how I handled it, uh, the people I talked to, um, particularly in a po political area. So starting in the year 2000, 24 years ago, my God. You know, we covered all the conventions. We spoke to all the people. I have all of that lined up. I have, you know, everything that we did. And I'm going, wow, oh, yeah, that happened there, that happened. So all of that is very positive. But the main, main thing is you find pictures of your life I put them in albums, by the way. I've got like 10, 15 just albums. So when I leave the earth, when I depart, you know, my kids will have it and stuff like that. And I go, yeah, my father's going to, what did they say in uh, that anchor man with Will Ferrell? Oh, kind of a big deal. <laughs> I don't see myself that way. I'm a working class guy. But the work I did was pretty good. And so uh, I'm uh, kind of accumulating it. And uh, I thought you'd like that picture. Okay, uh, tomorrow we're going to have a special announcement on the No Spin News. We hope you tune in for that. And uh, I'll be on, as I mentioned, Cuomo tonight at 8 o'clock on News Nation. We really appreciate those appearances. It brings a whole new audience to us uh, on News Nation, which is doing, you know, they're coming up. They're the only network really coming up, News Network. The rest are in decline, and some of them severe decline. Uh, and I think they try over there at News Nation. I think they try to be, you know, at least give you a semblance of what both sides are thinking. All right. So thank you for watching us tonight. I'm Bill O'Reilly. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.